welcome back. You have just tuned in to Women's AM. This morning, I'm joined by sisters Nusrat, Shahina, and our special guest this morning is Sister Khafaya Abdul Salam. Welcome back, sister. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And we've got, you know, a really great topic to discuss with you a bit later, inshallah. Um, but, you know, as always, you're a very, very busy lady. Yes. Um, and I'm sure with Ramadan just around the corner, you've got something up your sleeve as a treat for us all. So what are you working on? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, we're getting excited about, you know, Ramadan. So um, the project I'm working on at the moment is how we're going to get mums and children excited for Ramadan. Done. Yeah. And so we'll be working on just giving moms and you know tips on how we can make the most of Ramadan because we'll be very busy. Yeah. So it's yeah. more about how we organize ourselves and scaling down on the worldly activities yeah. and then increase our spiritual activities because this is probably you know one opportunity Absolutely. To, to get this um, right and we want to be part of it as moms. We don't want to be behind the cookers exactly. cooking. Exactly. Absolutely. So, it's such so an important topic and it you know, is, we'll yeah. be doing a show yeah. uh, about this ourselves actually. Yes. So is it, will it be um, kind of tips to get the kids involved? It'll be tips to get the kids involved and because it's summer and you know the long fasting period yeah, so it's about yeah. coming up with a lot of creative ideas on how to engage the children and you know to make them also enjoy the ramadan spirit yeah because they want to be talking about that when they go absolutely so you want them to have the memories of ramadan so that's absolutely. what i've been working on and i'll be posting that on my website umaka.com oh fantastic yeah. well we'll look forward to that inshallah. <laughs> okay inshallah now we're going to go straight to her views where today we're discussing the adab of a muslim woman Have you ever met someone who literally took your breath away by their adab? Someone who's so, who is so kind, humble and generous, who makes you feel like the most important person in the world? Well, this is adab, something that the Prophet, peace be upon him, held in such high regard. Adab can be defined as good manners, courtesy, respect and appropriateness, covering even such simple acts as entering and exiting the washroom, posture when sitting and cleaning oneself. According to Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, refrained from bad language. He used to say, the best amongst you are those who have the best manners and character. And of course, this is a live show and we want to hear from you. So if you have any comments about the topic, please do call the studio. The number is on your screens now. Or you can tweet us at Islam Channel hashtag one. So, Sister Khafei, I'm going to come uh, uh, to you first with this. Yes. It's such an important topic. Very important. Um, you know, Adab is something so apparent. Right. Uh, you know, everybody always notices about you whether it's good or bad Correct. so I think sometimes we are taken aback aren't we by people's exactly. manners so why is this um, it's because um, we know as Muslims because we know that this character is Islam is about good character yeah and we know that the Prophet was sent to perfect um, this good character for yeah, us absolutely but I think because people due to cultural conditioning and their upbringing I think within the society they find it normal to say certain things yeah do you know people lash out at you sometimes yeah you say the salams and people are not returning the salams yeah and you have women rolling their eyes at you we become really you know we judge people a lot we do lots of vulgar language nowadays um, the youth not respecting their elders yeah and yeah. why is this it's because we've forgotten all about the manners, yeah. the adab that our religion has taught us. Yeah. And so I think sometimes this is all due to a lack of um, knowledge yeah. of Islam and we need to equip ourselves with that. Yeah. Because for me, I look at from a point of view of what are we actually teaching our children because yeah. we are their role models. And you know, even how do we treat our neighbors? This you, is I've true, seen yeah. arguments yeah. where you look and say, SubhanAllah, sister, why are you doing this? Yeah. And it's like, leave me alone, I have a right to do this. Yeah. You yeah, know, things simple as saying thank you, please, we don't say that anymore because yeah. we think this is my right, I need to demand it. Yeah. And yeah. it's really appalling. I've seen so many things and you think we should not be doing this. Even down to simply I'm wasting food, you see a lot of wastage. And this is part of, we should not be doing this either. Yeah. And it's part of, you know, good character our morals as well so for me I've seen quite a lot and uh, I think inshallah it's more about re-educating ourselves about the basics yeah and absolutely. how we can get rid of this um, um, appalling behavior I think that that's we a do really important around. point isn't it because yeah. um, you know obviously as we've said Islam yeah. you know uh, yeah. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him came that's here right. to kind of perfect our characters to teach us that's good right. manners and this is something you know obviously we we understand that we're yes. here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right. this is a form of worship it's you know I think sometimes we fall into the trap of looking at worship in a very kind of siloed fashion yes. um, and, and not understanding that, that actually that's manners right. is a big part of that there's so many um, hadith that talk about this yeah 
you know, subhanAllah, we still end up struggling with it. Uh, Sister Nusra, how, how, can we, uh, how can we kind of strive to um, attain the, the kind of idab that, or, or good manners that Islam teaches us? Well, actually, in order to first do that, we have to kind of look at adab as a whole. Adab is, when we refer to adab, we're talking about, yes, morals, manners, refinement, um, decorum. But again, mentioning when you talked about how people tend to put it in very compartmentalized ways, like yeah. with very compartmentalized religion. Um, Adab is something that's holistic, so it can be within the social frame. We have um, it affects our, the way we conduct our, ourselves in our households, our employment, just everything. But I think how we can kind of strive for our, that adab. I know the way particularly I do is that I look first. I, we do introspection, so I tend to sometimes look at what I'm doing, analyze: Am I being considerate of this person? So that's that self-reflection aspect. And for me, it really helped when I looked at um, looking at other people who actually have that adab. So that may be something very helpful to Muslims. When we see other Muslims that do have adab, mm. um, it kind of motivates us to do the same. So, for example, when I was at university, I saw sisters, actually, that exemplified what I knew about adab, and it, it rubbed off on me. Yeah. So I learned that there are certain ways of doing things as well. And even when we look to the Prophet, looking at the Prophet's example is a very um, helpful thing. So the way the Prophet used to interact with people, even people who actually were very mean to him. We see, for example, in, in Taif, where people are throwing stones at the Prophet, I think the biggest test for, for how we strive to um, um, obtain adab is going back to the way the Prophet, the way the Prophet implemented it, but also um, implementing it in situations where the person we're dealing with doesn't have adab because that is a big test it's yeah. easy to be um it's easy to show manners to somebody else mm -hmm. who does have it but the true test is to um show it to people who don't show it to you back as yeah. well so that's how i do it i look at other people do it i look to the prophet Islam, and, and examples within sira and i have myself reflection and know that any action that I do has a, a, um, a resonating effect yeah. with somebody else. Yeah. I think that they're, they're really good tips, mashallah. But mm. I think, generally speaking, when we experience kind of bad adab, bad manners, it's usually when people are, you know, when you're stressed, when you're in a rush, right. uh, you know, commuting in the morning, school run. These are all kind of prime times for like bad adab. And we don't always have time for, you know, the kind of reflection and the thinking before we act and that kind of thing. Mm. So, how can we, uh, you know, when we kind of fall into bad habits in these times of, you know, high stress? Um, how can we kind of cope better with those? I think how we can cope better with it, because sometimes, yes, reflection generally when you are on the train can be a bit hard, is to, if somebody has behaved in that kind of way, like, for example, pushed you or shoved you, try and restrain yourself from not pushing them back or, yeah. throwing, your, or throwing your anger about. Sometimes having that kind of, even if it means holding yourself, yeah. that can be very helpful as well. And always trying to have a smile, even when you're not... Um, even if when you're not feeling happy about what somebody else has done or yeah. do something nice in return so if somebody's pushed you and um, when you're on the train you could for example if you, if you have a seat or something you could offer them that seat for example yeah or even just say oh okay I'm sorry so that kind of insets in the other person's mind that what they've done is wrong yeah so yeah. instead of reacting badly to somebody pushing you could say excuse me I, I see that a lot on the train instead of somebody shouting the others like oh excuse me so it yeah. sets in that person's mind that what they've done is wrong but you would have handled the situation yeah. in a way that doesn't and sometimes they might not have even realized yeah, sometimes some people we, we do think people are being rude and making it is just excuses a, for other people as well yeah, making absolutely. excuses for other people as well is very important in yeah. actually um show not only showing our dad but making making sure that you maintain your own yeah, as well yeah. but I mean I think sometimes we do sometimes we do lose our call don't we and yeah, you know it does humans. happen and I think to kind of be realistic with ourselves and think if we've done that okay just think next time I'm in that situation I'm going to try and deal with it better yeah. or uh, you know another thing I try and do is if I think uh, actually I really handled a situation badly um, you know obviously Islamically um, you know a good deed wipes out a bad deed awesome. so you know, if, I, if you really feel that you've wronged someone, maybe spoken yeah. to them in a bad way, yeah. do something nice. Not necessarily yeah. for that person, because it might have been a stranger, but, yeah. you know, for, for somebody else. And, you know, inshallah, that would be Actually, in a, in a hadith mentioned, actually, by the Prophet, he, he was asked about which, which qualities would admit a person to paradise. Mm. And he said, fear of Allah and a good attitude. Mm. So we see the importance of adab, but even the reward of that Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, it's a high So sometimes, even when we are in the hustle and bustle, particularly in London as well, get commuting, we could remember that as well, yeah. the reward, and just showing good um, adab in that way. So if somebody has done that, try and wipe it out with a good deed. Absolutely. Open the door for somebody Inshallah. else. So, Sister Shahina, what about you? How, how, how do you uh, kind of strive to achieve this, uh, this, this level of uh, adab or good manners? The question that I want to employ, I think Sister Nistrak covered it quite well, 
Oh, mashallah. There's not much I can add to it. I know. I, I love <laughs> what you say. You always have some way of it, not only enhancing my answers, but even adding a perspective. So go on. Oh, it's <laughs> um, embarrassing me now. Such good adab, mashallah. The question I'd like to um, explore is what is adab? Adab, in, you know, every society, every culture has their own definition of what adab is. Now, for the Asian culture, you know, there's certain things that are fine. So, for example, we wouldn't go around calling our uncles our dad's age Mr. Muhammad or Muhammad, how are you? Oh, That's rude. That. That's disrespectful. Oh, a man that. our father's age, we would call him uncle mm -hmm. to show him that respect. Yes. Um, but then there are other things. Like, I grew up um, being taught that women should be quiet all the time. The more quieter you are, the better mannered you are. Mm -hmm. That's something I very much disagree with because I don't think that's in line with the teachings of Islam in that we should teach our daughters to grow up to be confident, mm -hmm. yeah, to be yeah. able to have the confidence to enjoy the good if they see something wrong. Obviously in the best way, I'm not saying now bring up a daughters to be really mouthy and that, no, no, mm -hmm. no. You know, even to give see her, we can, that can be done with integrity. It can be done with dignity. Yeah. You, yeah. you know, you teach them the wisdom how to deal with issues, but to be quiet and to be meek in every situation that when life throws tests at you that you don't know how to deal with it, when yeah. you come across people who are really yeah. tough that you don't know how to deal with it. Uh, something like that, I would refer to Islam and really look into how Islam teaches our women yeah. to be. So, yes, it's certain things that are universal, like I said about the uncle, and there are other things that we really do need to look into. And um, on the face of you, I think, oh, mashallah, she's quiet. Of course, not. I'm not saying being quiet is the wrong thing. It's good. There's time and place for it. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And what I'm saying, don't crush um, women and girls' personalities. Yeah. 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 You need to have a personality. <laughs> this is, if, if girls That's don't, right. especially when they're young, if you don't voice your opinion, how will you know um, what opinion your daughter holds or That's what right. her thoughts are? Or to, to be able to correct them, to yeah. be able yeah. to yeah. fine tune them. Absolutely true. Absolutely so, true. And I think it's really interesting that you've mm. kind of, um, you know, reminded us that when talking about dub, we have to go back to what Islam says about That's it, right. not what culture says about it. Mm. Um, and, and I think this is, it, it's really important as well when giving um, mm. dawah. And That's obviously, right. you know, manners are so important when, when giving giving dawah. Yes. Um, Sister Khafaya, how, how, can, uh, how can our manners enhance, uh, you know, the example that we give in dawah? Because we, you know, I would say that we are the ambassadors of Islam and we know that when we give dawah it is through our character. Yeah. Because we know during the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallam, it was through his dealings with people, he was compassionate, he was merciful, he was very generous. That's and absolutely true, mashallah, and of course he is the best of example <laughs> that we strive to follow in. And we'll come back to this because I want to hear more, inshallah. <laughs> okay. But we do have to go to a quick break, inshallah. Okay. But do stay tuned as we'll be back very soon to resume where we have left off. Just before we go, we have a reminder of this week's competition.